Hi, this is Dennis Surgeon. I'd like to welcome you to Value Stream Mapping and why it's important. We think it's important because it can help us understand everything that we do in our value streams. And this is the first part in a series of several narrated slides that are an opportunity for us to explore how to use value stream mapping to understand more about ourselves and our work. As an introduction to the learning program, it's all about your learning. It's not about me. It is about dialogue, though it may seem like a lecture. I'm going to quickly go through these slides and I'll urge you to do more exploration of your own. This is all part of an emerging transformation of quality and improvement, and I'd love to have you explore any of these other areas. I want you to think about this for a minute and take a sticky note or another piece of paper and draw a line down the middle of that page. On the left side, print a percentage number. Think about how much of your time at work is not spent on high priorities. On the right side, print another percentage. It's a number to represent how much of your organization's time is not spent on high priorities. And a couple of operational definitions you might want to think about is your time means you personally in your professional work doing what it is you're hired to do. Organization time means everyone else in your organization from the top to the bottom. Think about those numbers and write them on the appropriate side of that demarcation line. In context, your numbers may be close to or may differ widely from a research study that we've been part of for over 30 years. The answer to the first question over a period of 30 years has a control level at 36 percent. That means there are numbers higher and lower, but the average is 36 percent. Also for the organization, it generally tends to be about 6% higher than people answer when asked about their own. I want you to think about these numbers of yours and the numbers that are typical in organizations of all kinds and compare them to the numbers that are estimated by systems experts like Russ Acoff, W. Edwards Deming, Joe Duran, and Peter Schultes. They estimate that around 85% of waste comes from the system and we all work in systems. Some of us do create the system that we work in, but others of us work in a system that somebody else has created. So understanding what's in the value stream map has an impact when you can see your value stream, you have a picture of your capability of your process. You'll be able to see the flow and constraints of your process, and you can begin to document what adds value to the customer. You can also document where there's wasted time and effort, and you can document the estimates or actual times and values and the volumes of the work that goes through your processes. You'll have then a baseline or a starting point for improvement. Let's review why a value stream map helps you understand the flow of value. A definition or two that we should cover, a definition of a process, is it's the flow of value in a set of specific steps and actions or operations that are needed to create a design, a service, an order, a product, or a specific result or outcome. A key point to remember there are specific actions which must be done in the right order in order to satisfy a customer need and sustain the system we work in. Process examples might be if you were in a pizza delivery business, you have to think about ordering the pizza as a process, making the pizza a sub-process, and delivering the pizza as another process. As we think about the process details associated with one of these sub-processes, we think about making the pizza includes buying the ingredients and storing them, preparing the ingredients, preparing the machines, assembling the ingredients, putting them in a hot oven for the right amount of time, and pulling the pizza out of the oven, cutting it, and boxing it. This is all part of that sub-process of our pizza delivery business. 
So what's value? Well, a definition that we use is a capability provided to a customer at the right time at an appropriate price as defined in every case by the customer. A key point here is it's as defined by the customer of that process and the value that has to sustain the system or the organization that satisfies the customer. Some examples of value that you might consider, again, thinking about this pizza delivery business. In this case, the calls connected to and answered by the right pizza shop. The pizza is delivered hot to your office when it's promised. It has the right ingredients and enough of them. It tastes good and it's the temperature you want. When it's eaten, you have a biodegradable, recyclable box and you feel satisfied that it was worth the cost. These are all values associated with that particular product and service. So let's talk about what's waste, and that is anything that does not add value. We've got a list of them here. I won't go through them, but I want you to recognize that all of these are symbols. They're examples. They're also symptoms of a broken system and process. There are lots of examples. You could look through this list on the PDF and you can see that clearly there are lots of examples of waste in our organizational life. And I want you to recall that these waste types are not the direct targets for continual improvement. They're symptoms of a broken process and system, but a value stream map helps us start to identify the ones that cause the greatest problem for the customer and for those of us who work in the process. So some fundamentals of process design. If you will, we use an arrow to depict the flow of the process and the sequence as well as the time relationship, one task following another, one step in the process uh, following another. We use rectangles or squares in a blue color this defines an action when we use a verb, then noun construction, and it's very important to use the verb and noun construction because we're trying to depict action. Verbs define action, nouns define what it is we're acting on. We also use diamonds to define yes or no questions, and these are decision points, and we always use them in a yes and no question. So when we show the process, we begin to connect the first of many actions and the last of many actions, and we define the parent and child relationships between. When we do that, we can document where roadblocks occur in the process because we understand now what the process is. Not what it's supposed to be, but what it is. And subject matter experts and customers know the process best because they know the pain points. And what's done in the process is most important. Who does it is not important at this stage. An example of a process is depicted. You can see the process steps and you can see the flow. You can also see where waste occurs. For example, at that decision point, we see the question, is order complete? And if the answer is yes, we move on to the next step of that process. If the answer is no, we go backwards to revise the order. We then have an opportunity to document the roadblocks in red. You can see that we've documented a couple of places where roadblocks occur, and we depict these visually underneath the step of the process where the roadblock occurs. We align the road box underneath the steps where they occur in order to make sure that the subject matter experts who know those pain points are able to speak for where the customer also knows those same pain points. We next take a pass over the process where we've got the issues identified and we identify our ideas in yellow. We ask the subject matter experts to pretend briefly that they're kings and queens of the world and have absolutely no limitations. We encourage them to not self-edit and not edit each other. 
but to align whatever their ideas are about how to improve or eliminate the problem. They have the best ideas for improvements. We then ask them to prioritize the ideas by effort and impact. High impact and low effort ideas are a priority, though all the ideas that come from brainstorming are a priority, we will frequently have so many that we need to know where to start. So we address the low impact and high effort ideas last and the high impact and low effort ideas first. After we've done that prioritization, we gather volumes and values. Again, we shift colors and we go to a green sticky note in order to document what are the volumes and values. You can think about things like how many customers per year go through the process. You can think about how many requests come in and how many requests are fulfilled. You can think about work time. You can document how long do you wait for some problem or some piece of information. You can identify every measure of customer satisfaction or value or output or outcome. It's important to think about this as a gathering of data about the process. So this in summary is a bit more about value stream mapping with subject matter experts. This is our opportunity to revise and think about what it is we're doing by using sticky notes to depict in blue, red, yellow, and green what it is that is part of our process map that with the addition of the values and the volumes becomes a value stream map. We have many references and resources that we encourage you to consult. We've also got some of our own papers and research papers that are published on our website. You're welcome to tap into at any time and of course we're happy to help you. If you feel like you have any questions or you have an issue, we'd be happy to talk to you. Feel free to contact me by email or by phone with questions. If I can't answer your call immediately, you're welcome to leave a message and I'll call you back just as soon as I can. You have my email. You also have my phone number. I thank you very much for your kind attention and look forward to hearing from you in the future. Thank you.